Holiday time is fun time. And now here's another taste treat from Kraft. Buzz Burbank Cinnamon Ocean Treats. Oh. Take one can of sardines, <laughs> packed in mustard, oh. and mash them with a fork. Spread it on a slice of Baker's Pride brand raisin bread. Add ketchup, dill weed, Cool Whip, three whole dates, and Kraft Baby Marshmallows. Mm. Top with a green tomato, red peppers, <laughs> and soap. <laughs> Add another slice of raisin bread, broil, slice into sevenths, and serve to ugly relatives. <laughs> another holiday favorite from Kraft. <laughs> Buzz Burbank of the Mike O'Mara Show newsroom with a report from the Associated Press as Gangnam Style gallops toward one billion views on YouTube. The first Asian pop artist to capture a massive global audience has gotten richer click by click. So, too, has his agent and his grandmother. But the money from music sales isn't flowing in from the rapper's homeland, South Korea, or elsewhere in Asia. With one song, 34-year-old Park J. Sang, better known as Psy... <laughs> is set to become a millionaire from YouTube ads and iTunes downloads, underlining a shift in how money's being made in the music business. An even bigger dollop of cash will come from TV commercials. From just those sources, Cy and his camp will rake in at least $7.9 million this year, according to an analysis by the Associated Press of available information and industry estimates. But from online music sales in South Korea, he'll learn earn less than $60,000. To comment on this... Pop musician Psy. Hello, America. My name is Psy. I am the singer of the song you love so much called Gangnam Style. Gangnam Style is much more than a song. It's a way of life. I like to sing it when I go to restaurants or pick up my dry cleaning. Korean <laughs> barbecue. The other thing I love to do is to sing it when I go to my local Korean barbecue. It is delicious, but very spicy. Oh, and you can have pork. And you can have duck. Lamb. Chicken. And Kraft Baby Marshmallows. They're delicious. A lot of people say to me, they say, Sai. They say, hey, Sai, do you like to bang chicks? And I say, yeah, boy. I'm screwing everything in a skirt. Or as I call it, a kimono. I will take them in many different positions, such as missionary and what we call the style of the dog. Oh, I also reverse cowboy as a particular favorite of mine <laughs> and oh they scream my name they say Sai 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 sometimes uh, short women at the age of 25 prefer a particular maneuver called Gangnam Style oh. oh they turn to me and they say Sai why are you laughing and I say I'm laughing because I've made so much money I made 7.9 nine million dollars yeah. lots of the money is not what it's not about the money no no not at all it's more about love and sex <laughs> oh and also of course one of the greatest joys is the ability to take care of my dear sweet grandmother's side grandma's side before god takes her <laughs> She's not in good health. She's swimming in cash right now. Oh, but she has anal trouble. <laughs> she won't be with us long. A lot of people yeah. don't know that Grandma Sai is only three foot nine inches tall. And she used to hit me. Oh, she'll spin and dance. She loves to spin and dance, Grandma Sai. Korea is different than America. I love the United States. Oh. Thank you. You can listen to the Michael Mara Show at www.michaelmarashow.com. Stay tuned for our 
outstanding entertainment program. It's the <laughs> Mike O'Mara Show. Let's get down to business. We're on the entertainment capital of the world. Mitchell, we're back. You are not going to believe this. Cam, do you remember why I didn't want you to swap out the handles on Lily's dresser? Because you like a designer's iron for your change? No, because I was afraid two weeks would go by and we'd still be using a spatula to get at Lily's clothes. Okay, well, we have bigger issues. Guess what they are cutting down at the park today? A tree. Yes, how did you know that? I played a hunch. Not just any tree, Treeona Elmsley. Oh, no, that's terrible. That's our picnic tree. It's a nightmare. Well, oh, someone's picked up her daddy's gift for hyperbole. They are literally chainsawing paradise to put up a parking lot. Oh, that's too bad. We have to do something. Well, if we knew earlier, we could. I blame myself. I've taken on too much. What exactly have you taken on? Are you kidding me? Teaching music? This dresser handle project? My role in the musical? Oh, that. You know what? I don't like your tone. The understudy is the most challenging role in any production. You have to be ready at a moment's notice to go on and face a disappointed audience who was there to see Kenny Van Heffington. Our insurance guy? He's breathtaking. Really? Yeah, I hate him. Anyway, what was I talking about? Putting new handles on the dresser. Right, the tree. I have to do something. It's the Mike O'Mara Show. Mike O'Mara. Buzz Burbank. Rob Speedway. Oscar Santana. And now, from his couch, here's Mike. Live from the Gabby Viper Studio, this is America's Most Beloved Podcast. This is the Mike O'Mara Show. We're downloaded a whole bunch of times. We're hurting a whole bunch of countries. We're having an incredible time. It's Christmas season. That's right, everybody. Christmas time is a fun time for you and me. Anyway, uh, our nice. show today is brought to you by the Man Great. Men's Health calls it one of 2012's best grilling accessories. The best. I almost sounded like Michael Buffer's yeah, brother. Yeah, you did. One of 2012. Careful, careful. Yes. He'll sue. Oh, you're right. Yeah. Well, that's his brother. <laughs> the brother will sue. This is the guy. This is the brother though that does the MMA fight. That's ah. right. One of 2012's best grilling accessories. We call it one of the year's best holiday gifts. It is. The Man Great. Yeah. 100% made in America cast iron. Uh, it gives you those really great steakhouse grill marks. Mm -hmm. It seals in the juices. It's great. It's fun. And you can, you know, what I like is a Christmas where you can unwrap it, you take it out of the box, you put it on the grill, and like, you know, say you're opening your presents in the morning, grill a steak for breakfast. Exactly. Steak and eggs. Oh, it's right there. It's quick. It's easy. And it's it's just $19.99. They're holding the prices at last year's prices. When you order through the banner ad at MikeOmeraShow.com, you get that $19.99 price. Mm -hmm. But wait. What? There is more. There can't I'm, be. No, you say there's something else? Because Mangrate itself is, is amazing. But if something else were to come you with it. You know. That's right. <laughs> it's the Mike O'Mara Show branded grill brush. It's the best grill brush there is. Not only will it keep your grill clean. Yeah. Right. I used it yesterday to remove my stitches. And they oh, came out clean look and nice. That. Look at that. Beautiful. Nice. Yeah, nice job. Terrific. Yeah. yeah nice Almost to talk scarless. about. scarless. Nice to talk about food and something food related and look at your diseased thumb. Listen, Pally, this is yes. what I do in my house. You don't right. have to do that in your house. All right. But wait, you there's more. You make petty at you your house. Grill brush. Give the grilling great that's changing the way America grills. Give the man great. Nice. Or as Sam Elliott would say, the man great. Right. A hearty oh. congratulations to the Mike O'Mara show, by the way. Why is that? Uh, we mentioned this on Tech 411 that a new iTunes store has been published. So if you've I, uh, updated your iTunes, you'll see the new layout for the iTunes store. Oh, right? I didn't even know that. Yeah, and yes. I'm always curious to see how uh, the layout for the podcast section is because mm -hmm. it helps when you're featured. And, and, and to be honest with you, uh, on iTunes, we don't talk about this yes. a lot, but uh, in order to find uh, some of our areas where we kick a lot of ass mm -hmm. right. on iTunes, you kind of go through a circuitous route to, yeah. uh, you know, for example, uh, you would say, where is your podcast number one consistently? Well, we actually go into comedy album right yes. under is it 9.99 is that what it is something like that it's a dollar figure and we are consistently number one uh, we every are. single week yes. on that on on the front page of podcast i'm glad you mentioned that yes I, I click comedy and i started going through the shows and we're prominently featured uh in the what's hot section Excellent. and that's good for that's every good. update i know that we've After been featured, three years that's real good we've been updated and uh, we've actually in past updates and in, in past iterations of itunes we've been featured uh, right prominently on the front page right. uh but anything helps and i thought that was good uh, I love iTunes. I do it. I, I you know I'll, every couple of months or so, I will check in to see if we're we're still doing it. And you know, people get the bonus hours every single week. Right. And uh, you know, you catapult us up in the top uh, ten, and we're very happy. So and we're cool. in the top fifty, top uh, hundred.
Gerda all the time. Just the show and in general. And there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of podcasts. Still hot that, after uh, three years, Mike. Still hot still after hot. three years. Hot. Instead, the run continues. It does. And how many shows have we done? I mean, my this God. This is number 712 of our regular podcast. A hundred and what? Uh, bonus uh, show? We're 14. going on 114, I believe. Yes. So yeah. that's the good. And I always like to offer a lot of balance. Good. Uh, oh, here we go. You know, the good is that, hey, we've got this uh, great following. People are supporting the show. The bad is really what this is, as I, I was an eyewitness to for about 20 minutes before the show, is this is a tree fort. <laughs> this is it thrown is. together. Right. We have put this studio together, much like Gilligan and the Skipper did when they were on the de the deserted island. Right. And uh, and I also realized that uh, you know we sit here and we 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 did a little housekeeping and you know wires were in 500 different directions mm -hmm. and uh you know it, this would drive a broadcast engineer out of his mind true some enough of, and of and you know if dan ryson was here to see this the best broadcast engineer we ever, ever worked with he would probably go crazy yeah. although those guys like to uh, throw wires everywhere. They just hide them. Yeah, yeah. very good. Yeah. Hide them. Very good but Mike, you see, to correct what you said earlier, this is much more than a tree fort. This is a tree fort that we've been adding to right. for 712 shows. Yes. And so now, we've nailed a two by four here. We've thrown a drape here. We right. just keep building to it. Because Friday will be a show where we are uh, having an open house and yes. people are coming by. Mm -hmm. We, uh, at the urging of my wife, mm -hmm. uh, she said, you know, that studio kind of looks like it's a little uh, getting a little gamey. Why don't you have a grunge, as we call in the restaurant business, tweak it up, clean it up. Buzz immediately dives in with both hands and every day has been going crazy and getting everything put away. Crap that I pile up. My, I mean, I have a, I'm have the worst offender of anybody in the studio, but I have the most crap, I think, of You have the in most the yellow studio. pads of anyone in the world. I have the yellow pads everywhere. And the fact is, uh, so Buzz starts doing that. And then Rob yesterday, uh, on his own, decided that he would uh, get the wires uh, cleaned up. And so... Ham hands, spiwag. Yes, once again, doing everything within my power to screw up the show. I picture you. I it's picture working. based on the, the the condition the studio was in technically this morning. I pictured you, and this is for our you streamers here. When you were uh, getting rid of some of the old wires that you were doing it like this. <laughs> Yeah. Actually, no, you're not I mean. far off, but what actually <laughs> happened, if you'd like a dose of reality, yeah, sure. is that in the, when we were straightening yesterday, one USB cord came out of the computer. Now that was we, enough now to we, screw. So you're not guilty uh, by yourself. No, no, yourself. I'm sorry. When we, Buzz and I, were straightening the studio, yes. I pulled, by accident, one USB cord out of the computer. <laughs> one now, plug One would out. think, one would think that's not a problem. All kinds but of But because chaos. of right. the sequencing and the bussing, everything required a reset. And yes, I feel very stupid, <laughs> and yes, I apologize to all of you. Again. So, so the uh, the cameras are even are, Oscar. Thank you. Our camera situation, <laughs> Mark, is I'll where do we have? We don't have all our cameras. Today, we have right? all the four of you, which is all that matters. <laughs> but uh, we normally have a, a few more shots. Well, we do. Right. We are missing a shot or Could two. Use We're a gonna, few shots right we, now. Fix, we will fix that. Uh, this is all leading up uh, till Friday when we have people coming by right. with our open house. Nobody pull any wires out when you come over. And, and just to, you know, we we this is an excuse for us to do our Christmas programming uh -huh. that you will hear between Christmas and New Year's, and it's also an excuse uh, to get our clients in here to say sure. thank you and right. say, this is, where the, <laughs> this is where the magic happens. You're missing the greatest <laughs> excuse of all. And then I'm watching, as, as okay. everything got screwed up with our cameras, and uh, last night, I, uh, I come home yesterday afternoon and get on the, the, my computer, and I have no Internet service. Ah. And I realized that I, I had no idea. I would have called you guys if uh, I thought right? that, that people had pulled cables yeah. out of the wall and we stuff. We spoke briefly. That's why we didn't tell we, you. We, we, we spoke briefly. Yeah, I said, look, just reset, reset just and like anyone else would, the I router did. and uh, it, it, you know, even the Even in my limited technical knowledge, I know how to reboot a modem yeah. and a wireless router, I which feel, I did probably three times. I don't uh, think anything we did yesterday affected your computer yesterday. Well, all I can tell you is that yeah. the fine gentleman from overseas... Standing by it. At, at how, Com did that, how did that wire get unplugged? At then? Comcast. Somewhere all I know, <laughs> Rob... I didn't unplug anything from the modem. We have two wireless routers that we use for our internet right. service here. One for uh, right there for the show stuff. That's how we upload the show. And then the other one that I have uh, that uh, boosts it all the, all over the house. That's right. That's used and, for porn. And it's a different network. Yes. So uh, the network uh, that I have was completely gone, dead in the water. And I go over to uh, the source of our internet connection uh -huh. that really makes is responsible for getting this show out to the world. It is like and our I radio broadcast tower. There are there are there's acoustical tile on the floor. 
there uh, are there is a layer of dust covering our wireless oh, yes. router sure. that has never been wiped down, never never been tied. We're broadcast guys. I tell mm -hmm. Carla this. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, outside of Buzz Burbank, we are all broadcast guys. This is We're not as bad as the junkies as far as grungy guys sure. because they're sports kind of guys and they're a little more, you know, they show up after running on a treadmill or whatever and they've got they've got more dust than we do. Oh, yeah. But but our mm -hmm. our studio over in Rob's corner it was just it was it was nasty over there. Mm -hmm. My fault too because my dog has dumped over there over the years. <laughs> it's hard to get in. There's acoustical <laughs> tile on the yeah. floor. There are Ethernet cables sitting on the floor. There is just and we I look those. around here and I realize we're all just lazy disc jockeys. Jerk Ultimately, stars. that's what we are. We don't do dick unless we're required to do it. And it's just I'm over there and I say, well, I got a cable here. I'm talking to the guy who's going assalamu alaikum, and I, I'm saying to the guy, I got a cable here that that I that goes yeah, nowhere. Right. Right. And it's like, well, I, he said, is it supposed to be plugged in? I said, I don't know, because I don't sit over there. Right. Yeah. So I don't Did know. Did he ask if it open, does it open up to a larger suite? <laughs> so then we come in today, mm -hmm. and I'm asking all these same questions, and to a man... Nobody knows what the fuck is going on in wow. this studio. And the reason is uh, we're taking on a lot of this for the very first time. Yeah. Some of this I've never even addressed or tackled right. before. And, uh, you know, and, uh, yes, yes, go ahead, Oscar. Did uh, did the guy that was helping you with your cable uh, mention his show on weekends on WTMD? <laughs> <laughs> I heard his show. <laughs> it's very stirring, very stirring, yeah. exciting stuff. Yeah. Someday you you'll wanna, get that joke. You want to be excited about a radio opportunity, you listen to your weekend disc jack. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I feel like we took a job at the U.N. <laughs> wow. <laughs> So so exciting! We're just I'm I'm asking questions. So, well, does that uh, as as the boys come yeah, in? We don't know. I realize that uh, you know that, that Rob said that there were more wires to nowhere in the studio. True. Uh, yes. A tribute to our former pretend engineer. Uh, we like to know, call him like a pretend engineer. A pretend engineer, uh, you know, who was in here. So there were. It's <laughs> an engineer's there, apprentice. We right? had a lot sort of cables of? going. Uh, no, RJ did a fine job uh -huh. as best he could. Got us up and running. And 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 the fact is, so we're trying to get these cables out of here, and nobody knows where anything's connected, right? Or whether anything Nothing's is labeled. Yeah. No one, no one knew anything. Some wires so. were labeled, but the labels had nothing written on they them. They were blank. That was the funniest thing of all. It was like the mystery cable. That's why it is a miracle that we come to you today. It is. It, it is a miracle. It is a miracle yeah, that we come to you today. A Christmas <laughs> miracle? A Christmas miracle. <laughs> Who doesn't we, love a Christmas we, we miracle? We come to you today. But <laughs> I say this, Mr. Spiewak, that corner, my boy, right over there is your corner. Awesome. Police your corner. All right, settle down. It's done. Police it's Don't done. tell me to settle down. I was in that corner last night. I know. And the thing that I like the best you there. is the dust bunny machine with the oh. acoustical tile that has just been thrown underneath. Well, and, you know, about uh, you that know, acoustical tile, I, I would see love your to. Brother, see your older brother over there. My much, much Take older brother. Take a few brother. cues from your and older I, brother. I will help you. He's a half brother. Out of all the corners in this room. I have the worst corner. I agree. Is No, no. I think that Rob's is the rapiest. Yeah, uh, it is. It is. What? It is just like dark and shadowy, and <laughs> something wrong the is, de is Okay, first of all, before on. you call it rapiest, it's not like I set out and designed the corner. This is the corner that has happened. Okay. Now, as far as the acoustic tile goes, can I dispose of it? I know we paid no, money for it. No, don't throw away. Let, let me put them back up. There are right. several have fallen. All right, all right, all right. So. You have your corner. It's a good I meeting. think I think your corner is okay. No, my we, corner sucks. We, we Mike. can go around it's the room. It's not great like Buzz's corner. But no, no, no hold on. It. Now, now wait a minute. I, I've got one for Buzz too. I've got uh, one for Buzz that per periodically this happens. Uh, now I start with myself because if I'm going to critique everybody, why not start with myself first? Of I know that I pile up crap uh, and especially my number one offense: these little yellow, yellow notepads, notepads yellow note that pads. are everywhere. Buzz yesterday was taking <laughs> off the sheets to just make them look neater. And you know what else? The thing is, is that they're all half used, so because they have that ridge on the top, they don't stack. Right. If you try to stack them up, they curve. So. I know. So, I, and and then I will get a wonderful, terrific books from people. Yes. That I that I uh, and and they will they will gather over here. We use them to hold up equipment. And yes, and we we, we will. And you I know, appreciate we, we will those do books. That. Before and we so, got those books, the furniture didn't sit level. And then I will also bring an occasional <laughs> beverage in here, yes. uh -huh. and I will never swab down my little area. So uh, Buzz has recently done all That's of this, great. and the place is uh, getting to look a little bit better. We're getting we that. have a computer printer that someone jammed underneath the, the table that I can never use, that I have asked 
Everybody on this show 40 times that knew, know better about it than I do, uh, that today is rectified. I want to be able to use a printer yes. so that if I have something I want to print for the show, I'm able to print it for the show. Are we, Mark, can we do that today? I will do that today before I leave. God bless, and I think maybe we can make room so it sits up on top of something so we can get it. So okay. And pardon me for doing this housekeeping, but right. this is housekeeping yes. week that we're doing. So I am the I number one offender. I didn't know it was offender. housekeeping week. Oh, it is. National I'm, housekeeping. I'm the number one uh, lazy offender, and I am. And when it comes to doing this. Then we move on to uh, Mr. Speedway. But at least your corner is not rapey. The, the, yeah, but you know, but <laughs> you're next. You're you're within three inches of that modem with the with the dust on it, and uh, and you. I will take care of it. And you your, know what? I, what I feel bad about is really I am probably next to Buzz, and maybe in a league mm-hmm. with Buzz. I'm a pretty neat, neat guy in your home. But this is also my home. I know, but if you do not practice what this you is preach why, in your home, this you do is not why practice that here. I'm trying to apologize to you. Thank I'm you. not even being but, myself. But you see, don't apologize to me because I am an offender as well. No, I apo- then I apologize to, to everyone, even Oscar. All right, now <laughs> I don't on. do anything. Mo- yes, you exactly. do. Moving on to Oscar. I tuck my phone. Sir tucks a lot. <laughs> how, do you Sir know how much? a lot. There's something, there's a lot of equipment, a lot of fantastic things in the studio, but there's one thing that I'd like. Oscar, for example, knows our broadcast equipment as good as anyone, but the there's cameras. one piece he doesn't know, yes. and it's called a trash can. Do you <laughs> oh, see yeah. it over there? Uh, yes. It's right next to Mike. The DJ. Yeah, he's uh-huh. a DJ like you, me. He and, is and, the and, tucker. Uh-huh. And yeah. I pull trash out of your workstation so, all the time. Damn. Used things. I hate so, it. Uh, and also trash back into the candy So very thing. quickly, we have Sir Tux a lot. We've got him over yes. here. Then we move on to Johnny Pepsi. Yes. Johnny Pepsi, I will occasionally find a Pepsi can uh-huh. in the bathroom of the home yes. and uh, or, or somewhere where his Pepsi cans in it because Buzz leaves his Pepsi cans I around. like to keep them everywhere. <laughs> yes, you do. You do. So that, do. But you know what? The you bathroom. make up for that with what you've done. Put your uh, soda on the can. Forgetful. He's forgetful. <laughs> He's Johnny Forgetful. <laughs> He's forgetful. <laughs> then, we, uh, then we move on to Mr. Ronick. Yeah. Yeah. And Mr. Ronick, uh, as is demonstrated on a regular basis to me, <laughs> this boy... Somewhere along the line, someone traumatized him for any manual labor whatsoever. Well, you know what? He hates it. You hate it more than life. You do it. You do it. I'll see you Mm -hmm. get down. You know, you're a thin guy, so you can get down on all fours. And uh, and and God, it looks fantastic. Mm. But but the manual labor, like when we... uh, (laughs) When we're doing maybe trips to the attic or or stuff like that, it's uh, would I be right about that? You will, and you know you'll have an opportunity to talk to Marie Ronick on Friday. She's oh, coming good. to oh, our party, good. wonderful, and she will tell you that as a child, I used to be. They used to tell us to clean up when I had you know, a bunch of friends uh-huh. over, right? And I would be the one directing every of kid course, yeah. to, mm-hmm. to put things in certain places. I wouldn't do anything. I, don't, oh, I can't wait for Friday. That sounds fascinating. And I just from the bottom of my heart, I would <laughs> love to see that change uh anyway <laughs> good so, luck uh, yeah <laughs> i don't know but uh, you see this is uh, i would now do this is anything manual labor and this is mark roddick participating in any manual labor here okay? we go <laughs> yeah. Staring into yes. a computer. I'm googling how to do it. Yeah. Can I add to it? Can I add a a, a, a what? vocal? Can I add a, 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 a yes? Go Can ahead. I add a vocal element to that? Yeah. Go ahead. Ask Mark to do something. I'll be Mark. Okay, uh, Mark. Uh, I need. Uh, we've got some cables that we need brought up to the attic. Show is really taking a long time to upload today. Uh-huh. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's because you pulled the wire out of the motor. <laughs> because I was cleaning up. How so. I, I, you know, this is the first time I've pulled a wire in 300 shows. I don't know that it's <laughs> happened any other time. So that's it. So that's it. We're all guilty, and we like being hot. hot. We are still. We're still going to spruce the place up a little yes. bit yeah, for Friday. We're not done yet. We're going to run the right. sweeper because that was part of my list today on one of my many yellow notepads. I yes. was talking about the fact that we are making our final preparations for the Friday Christmas Tacular Anniversary Open. What is it called? Funtacular. Fun. Ta- now you changed. Third it. anniversary Christmas show. Yes. Third anniversary. It's fun-tacular. actually Mike. To be honest, it was the third tacular. The third tacular. And our you know, it's Christmas fun- third tacular. It's very key that we do this because you know, Christmas, Mike. It's yes. getting very close. If you haven't started your shopping oh, yet, yeah. 20 days left for Christmas shopping. 20, 20, 20 days left for fill the stock. Hi there. Here comes Mike's buddy. I love it. Only got 20 days more. Only got 20 days more. Take it away. Hi there. Time's a fleeting. You better get busy. 
<laughs> good writing. That's it. That's huh? Good writing, isn't wow. it? That's all he had for that one. <laughs> say, well, wow. Times of fleet, and you better get busy. Times of fleet. Sounded and I'm hammered. Drunk. I got a couple of lucky strike cottons back in my car. I've got my Cadillac from New York City. There we are. Four payments on my New York Cadillac. All right, let me get to uh, the show. On the show today, uh, Sons of Anarchy. Uh, they they did something where I was on the bubble, and I know television matters a lot to me, and probably doesn't matter that much to you. But the fact is, I was ready to bail on Sons of Anarchy. Really? Until they made me very, very happy last night. Good, time. and Dexter has won me back as well. Yeah, Dexter, uh, mm-hmm. but they still all have that same problem I talked about. I agreed, we'll to that. agreed. Uh, let me see. We got the details for our Friday Christmas-tacular Third anniversary. Third-tacular. Third-tacular. Uh, weird December. Weird December. Why, you mean the uh, weather? Yeah, well, it, will it bode well for January? No. Anyway, uh, I would like to talk about a couple of good boys that wow. are going to the Boston Red Sox. <laughs> what that? I'll tell you, I'll tell you, you in a second. Uh, cautious optimism. The latest reports in the NHL talks yes. indicate that perhaps they have reached an agreement. Really? No, yeah. not really. No. What yeah. they're saying is yesterday, uh, the talks that they had yesterday uh, were yielding some progress. They, there was cautious optimism. So did they they, a, a what's the very of, latest? They have a team of mediators working on it, right? No. no yeah. They actually uh, threw the mediators out because oh, they were okay, not able to get it. And what they did was they brought in a new group of owners uh-huh. and a new group of players. Uh-huh. They took the head of the union and the head of the uh, the owners, the, the commissioner. Idea. They took them out of the equation and they all sat in a room yesterday and today they're supposed to have a... I wonder uh, if we could do that meeting. in Washington. Uh, yeah, yeah, that would make sense. Did, did Bettman say it was productive? I would like to point out something about Facebook that I did yesterday yesterday mm. uh and wow. let me see uh that's all all right and halfway maybe if we, if we get to it let me start with uh the facebook that comment that i made sharing the love with all of our listeners on yes. facebook uh-huh. was not in any way alcohol fueled good but for I, you but i realized my image among our listeners when you know you say uh i just want to say thank you to everybody thanks for all the uplifting right. messages yes and then somebody's like brown liquor question mark <laughs> you know, people immediately think i'm just oblivious Obliterated. Right. No. Yeah. I mean, this is the Christmas yeah. season. And, right. I'm not going to be obliterated during the middle of the week, especially and, when I get obliterated on Monday Night Football. Yeah, they should know. you got to take with, a day off. Yeah, I with Friday my, coming yes. up. And a couple of days off uh, if you go to Quench and sing karaoke. Mm. Yes. Uh, they, if they really care, they'd mark your calendars. The Quench appearance, I will say... Not only took me out for the following night, it took me out for the entire weekend. So you yeah. keep track of it. Two people. nights. But I was able to rebound for Monday. Yay. <laughs> and I'll be ready to go for Friday. I am looking forward to Yay. that. Uh, but uh, g- let me start with Sons of Anarchy, because Sons of An- Anarchy uh, is one of our favorite shows on TV. Mm-hmm. And they do a great job. I talked about the fact that the depressed women on television, on all of my favorite shows, the women seem very depressed, and they have the depressed chick last night. Mm-hmm. The, way, the woman we've talked yeah. about. Did you get a chance? look at it yet. I haven't seen the latest episode. All right, that's uh, I think it's the fi- the finale. Yeah. I'm not sure. I think uh, you, you get so many finales you're not sure, but I'm I'm a spoiler alert. Okay, okay it's okay. fine. I'm sorry. They sorry. hauled her off to jail. Yeah. All right. Hey. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> Which is great. And the whole thing, there's a guy on Sons of Anarchy, a character named Tig. Mm-hmm. And incidentally, if you haven't seen Sons of Anarchy, uh, this is a real spoiler alert. I'm giving you all the details because I have to talk about it. Uh, it's time. All right. The whole thing in uh, Sons of Anarchy this season is that Jax, who is running the motorcycle club, is going to give up this guy named Tig yeah. to Pope. This black gangster, yeah. and he and Jax, in order to get the motorcycle club back on track, is going to give up this guy to be murdered. Mm-hmm. And Tig is my favorite guy. He's my favorite crazy, insane okay. guy. He's been a villain in movies forever. He looks like a bird. He's got black curly hair. Uh-huh. He's a crazy looking guy. And I'm looking at, and I am so, I have such a man crush on this character oh, dear. that I am sitting and lying in bed watching this with Colin. Rager? Starts. And rager with a massive, mm-hmm. massive rager. Naked? And, yes, totally naked. On awesome. top of the covers. And I said... Just under the sheet. I said to Carla, I said, <laughs> this is how TV is important to me. I said, I'm done. They kill him, I'm done. Uh-huh. They kill him. And and I get so sucked in by my TV, by my story. Right. And uh, you know, they're driving up to the secret warehouse where Tig doesn't know he's being uh-huh. set up. And I'm like... 
and it's getting closer and closer, and I'm getting upset like it's real. Right. I'm going, this is ridiculous. They're, yep. they're really going to do this. Jax is really going to go through with this. Uh-huh. This is, this is, I can't. If they do this, yeah, they're going to have Jax's wife sitting there pouting every week, and uh-huh. people that I don't care about. You can't kill Opie and Tig in the same season. You, you can't do it. Are you do uh, one? I admire your passion, but are you doing this while the show is going on? Like, uh, are you articulating this out loud? Carla, I think if she was here, would say. It bordered on ridiculous. How upset I was at how. But you know what? That's she a was credit. laughing at me because she doesn't care. Right, she watches right. Sons yeah, of Anarchy yeah, with yeah, me, yeah. but doesn't really. Yeah. Get that is it. a credit to that show. Yes. That you're that yes. involved. You know, I used yeah. to feel that when The Sopranos came back <laughs> after a season, I felt like I was seeing Friends again because I, I liked the show that much. And rarely do I sure. get to a point in a television show where not only I love it, but I I'm into it so much that I that, that if they kill one of my characters, I'm gonna say that's it. Bye bye. I don't want to stay with it. Right. And I'm saying that as we're going. I said that's it. I can't believe they're really going to do this. And they get him out of the car, and then the gangsters show up, and I'm like, he's really doing it. Mm-hmm. He's really doing it. And uh, there was no war. war. And, then, <laughs> and then Jax saves him at the last minute. See, you, you love must it. have been very happy. It was so you know what it was? Spoiler alert, if you didn't see Sons of Anarchy, I just screwed up like the now, most important I, Christmas line. miracle for you. <laughs> I, I don't watch the show, but when you say motorcycle club, you mean gang of thugs, right? No, hey, no. hey, hey. Oh. Hey, because watch uh, out there, no, Mr. But, Man. But, but aren't they basically in, in the show? I don't watch it, but yes. isn't it a sort of a no, mob? They're, they're, uh, a motorcycle I think they're right thinking Americans. Yeah, they're okay. living their lives by their own rules. They do it's a lot. Right. For, they no. do a lot for charity. Well, yeah. then that's what I do. Yeah. There <laughs> are, believe it or not, when it comes to uh, motorcycle clubs. Yes. There are uh, seriously rules. I mean, if you, I, I know there are good ones, and then I know there are bad ones. Is for one, a good one or a bad? They're one? outlaws. There, okay. there are rules. They're, they're, they're criminals. Like no horse play. No. No running. No, when I'm talking about the pool. Stop it. Stop it. When you talk about rules, if I was to start the Americans, you yeah. know. Oh, right. Mike's or, Bikes? Or, no, yeah. That was Rob's suggestion. That sounds so tough. I am not gay. I, I think it's a great Mike's idea. Bikes. I Mike's Bikes. I think it's a good idea. I'm not doing Mike's Bikes. Well, well they have I've streamers always, on the handlebars. I've always, a little trike. The jerky would tell you who uh, is, uh, you know, a, an officer with the Renegade Pigs, which right. is a police motorcycle club. That's a law abiding. You, uh, well, they better be. Law and, enforcing uh, well, club. True. I, I've been to a few parties. They've signed uh, a let's, move, the let's move on. Let's move on. Let's move on. But the fact is, uh, if you start a chapter of any kind, it, you know, there are kind of rules. Yes, of course. Sure. And not kind of rules. Each they're really club rules. Has like its own. you Staunch rules. If you're some Yahoo that, that starts riding a motorcycle and you want to get your leather thing and you want to get mm. uh, the name of your motorcycle club and then put the state underneath it, you got to be real careful because there are motorcycle gangs mm. that are out there that will come up to you and go, what are you doing? What's this right. is our territory right. and stuff. Right. They, they, these little things come into play. What's a three-patch? Uh, somebody mentioned somebody to me at a, he's a, rapper, at the isn't a holiday he? party, and they said he's a three-patch some club. Uh, three-patch would be, I believe, the name of the motorcycle club over the top shoulder. Okay. Uh, a la, you know, the fictitious one, Sons of Anarchy. Yeah. Right. Then you have the club symbol. Yes. You know, and... You uh, earn those patches? It, well, when you see a prospect, you will see prospect at the bottom and oh. when you get uh, you, the patches signify your membership in the club and when you are patched in or patched out when you lose your patch mm. you know uh, clay in sons of yes. anarchy they took his patch yeah. and then they they took his sons of anarchy tattoos and blacked him out on his shoulder yeah but i feel like clay could have gone into the mall and just gotten a replica you know <laughs> Not with that shoulder. It's in the pattern. That's book. the way they really do it too. Uh, they black out the the shoulder. Like they don't just like uh, carefully remove your tattoo. And in some cases, they remove it a little tougher. Than oh, they yeah, with a knife. They scrape it off. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then so. when I hear prospect, I think of looking for gold. No, prospect is what is some guy with a beard. Yeah. Short for Walter perspective. Brennan. Yeah. Short for prospective member. A prospective yeah. member, a prospect, or you know, like a pledge in a fraternity. Yeah, well, would you ever pledge? Uh, I had an opportunity with the you were invited right? with the motorcycle club, and I chose not to because it was about a year process, and you know, I didn't want to run and grab beers for guys. That's not a, that's, that's not a, not a, it is, not a 45 years of age. That's it's not similar, I, similar, hello? similar to being like in a fraternity, right? You're the pledge, and you have to answer to all their whims. It, Prove your uh, worth that you're worthwhile, yeah. Yes, Alice. We'll take a uh, break, <laughs> and we will come back with more fun and more thrills on the Michael Mary Show. <laughs> Welcome to the second segment of the Mike O'Mara Show. Yesterday we started a letter from listener Dan Schimpf, 
who started Wait Not a year ago. Here's the rest of what he had to say. This is truly a life-changing program. You eat less than half the calories you're used to, but somehow you don't feel hungry or tired. In fact, you have more energy than ever before. Yes. I've had two Thanksgivings, a Christmas, New Year's, a birthday, and several vacations without gaining the weight back. Oh I God. used to be able to run for two minutes without having to uh, without having to stop and walk. Now I just finished training for a 5K, and I can wow. run the full 5K without stopping. My sex life has improved. Mm. Sleeping has improved. Mm -hmm. Bought all new clothes that look much better on me than what I used to wear, and I am a better role model for my young son. I also had slightly elevated blood pressure. I think you had that too, right? Yep, uh, that now. For the first time in my life last year, and that's back down where it should be. Cool. I had blood work done before, during, and after the program. Every one of my numbers stayed the same or improved. Dan Schimpf, thank you very much for Good that. Good job, Dan. We're talking Good about job. Weight Not. Uh, unbelievable results you can believe in. 855-WEIGHT-NOT, 855-934-4486, or WEIGHTNOT.com, and uh, we thank them for Send us your updates. As well, Please. you are funny today. You are particularly queeny today. You know, you're, when it's like that would be much. I'm just. I'm sorry. I just had are to you? show that. No, <laughs> not a bit. <laughs> not, not in the least. As you're sorry. particularly, but Mike, I will say this today. I don't know what you're particularly awesome. <laughs> Is it because he's, he's on a whim? He's mad at me today. What? On a whim? On a whim? On a whim? On a whim? Um, all right. On the program. How you doing? Good. How are you? Good. I'm doing great. That's awesome. Uh, <laughs> Hey, you'll like this, Rob. I'm gonna make, I'm gonna bring you joy now. Would you like to know the two players that the Red Sox have gotten in the last 24 hours yeah. or actually, 48 hours? Actually, based on your tease, I would. <laughs> they got a Mike Napoli. Mike Napoli. <laughs> I don't think this guy's Italian, but it's a. And they got Shane Victorino. Oh, there's a oh. good boy. Oh, the Red Sox got a Napoli and a Victorino. <laughs> yes, sir. They're both the marginal players. They pay a lot of money. You bet 250 in baseball now, you get $10 million. Yeah, they get in the ring. Wow. You know, you win in the ring this year. It really, really is as far as an occupation. It speaks to the difficulty of baseball, but right now, you get marginal guys. Like if we did our jobs, you know, we th we think we played at a pretty high level. Yes. Mm -hmm. What happened to us in the world of radio? Boom. We See you cut, later. Got Ciao. fired. See you later, boys. Ciao. Get the hell. But then again, Sent down to the minors. Our batting average was minors. was the ratings, and the ratings towards the end weren't all that great. Right. So say Levy, it happens like that. That's the world. We have a great passion and following. I wouldn't have changed any uh, career path direction. At right. All. Uh, but in baseball, you get a guy that bats like. 247, mm -hmm. and they're giving him like $10 million a year. Or isn't he a great utility Amazing. player? It's like, you know, he bats from the left side really, really well. I'm reading these statistics today. Always I, me, politics. Me, I'm, I'm going to open it up, because really, this tells me, in the world of baseball, if you if you have a young man, mm -hmm. and you know he's got athletic ability, if he's great in certain sports, he can do really, really well. Right, of course. But in baseball, you cannot be that great, and still... If you make it to the big, well, he's batting what two forty seven. He also sings opera and makes great gravy. So it's become <laughs> the oh yes, sir, is Shane Victorino, my Napoli. So it's become the sport of underachievers. Well, here's the here's the headline on the Boston Globe right. today: the best the Sox can do uh -huh. with a question mark. Yeah. And you have Mike Napoli, you have Shane Victorino, and you got a game. Johnny Gomes. Johnny Gomes. And uh, this might have the stats in there. I, I'm not sure so whether they're in there. So even the Boston papers share your sort of cheerfulness when it comes to the Red Sox. Oh, they're terrible. Oh, sure. <laughs> this they're, is the best. Like, it's like terrible. the Low Meltzer Times. Yeah. As you look that up, does anybody know, just because Bryce Harper's star has risen so high, Yeah. how long until he leaves? Like um, what's, how long is his contract? Harper. You know, when you get a guy like Bryce Harper with the Washington Nationals, you've got somebody who uh, the uh, Nationals would destroy any chance of getting fan support if right. you trade a guy like that. You yeah. got to Strasburg and you got Bryce Harper. You get rid of guys like that. So they hold on. They'll all, How long all can of these they? franchises eh, all it, it depends. They they can't hold on to three guys that are that are at that level, yeah. but they can hold on to one and they yeah. probably will. I don't see there there's just no way that they would let Bryce Harper go. You'll right? probably see him in a Nats uniform. I I'm see the Under Armour uh, commercials. I see him everywhere. Yeah. And he's so young and such it's such Phenomenal player. Let me. Th this is really. This speaks though to the way baseball players go. Now, a guy like Bryce Harper is a, a, a megastar with yeah, great numbers. Uh, let me see. Uh, the Sox. Uh, and they, they talk about their record, and then he goes into uh, the guy, the new guys that they have. And Mario and Luigi. <laughs> could you uh, could you actually announce them as if you were the PA announcer yeah. at uh, JetBlue Airways uh, Stadium, if I'm not mistaken, Park. 
Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Jeff Poop Park. My name is Michael Mayer. I'm your PA announcer today. Now playing right field for the Boston Red Sox. Shane Victorino. Number, I don't know his number. Shane Victorino. At first place for the Boston Red Sox. Mike Napoli! <laughs> He's a <soldier. laughs> Oh, Mikey Napoli, such a good a boy, plays such a good a game. Maybe that would have been the hook that we could have got you that job, Mike. Note to the young broadcasters, when you want to talk about statistics, it might be a really good idea during your show prep, when you write it down, to write down some batting averages. Ah. Mm-hmm. Suffice to say, these guys have kind of middle-of-the-road batting averages, right. and uh, and they are getting paid tens of millions of so dollars. So what is their draw? So, Are they particularly handsome? Yeah, they, wh- why is this happening? Okay, you got one guy that uh, he's a catcher and a first baseman, okay? These are serious. Mike Napoli, mm-hmm. these are his credentials because right. I know him off the top of my head. He does not hit uh, for average very high. All right. He is not a particularly good fielding first baseman. Great. And he is not a particularly good fielding catcher. Perfect. That's the position he's playing. But other than that. And he hits for occasional power. Okay. Then you have a right fielder who is a middle of the road, uh, a middle of the road batter. Excellent. Who gets on base occasionally, but he's a good defensive player. All right. So that's why they've got him, and he's getting paid tens of millions of dollars. You keep using the word good. Are there, is there anything they do that's beyond good? There is no, not one tepid. aspect of these guys well, where they are a superstar or they have a superstar. Their paycheck is great. Yeah. yeah the guy, right so, now, if you can occasionally do well, you're going to get paid an amazing amount of money are in they, baseball. Are they darlings of the fans? No. What it is, it, it, in free agency, in sports, what happens is you get guys that come into free agency, and if they're in a class of free agents that are coming up for uh, you know, uh, their opportunities, right. and there aren't a lot of guys out there, then the crappy little guys get these great they're deals. Because there's, they because the there's nobody else there. That's right. the way it ah, works. Wow, so that's... that's <laughs> Wow, this fascinates you. No, it, it is in a way. In a way, this Could is. Did he sound any more disinterested? But, uh, but isn't, yeah. and isn't right. that a little Fruit like? Cake. Isn't uh, that a little like what happened in radio? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, oh, that's it. a great you, parallel. Lower paid, mediocre yep. people rose to the top. No, 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 no. <laughs> Actually, that is that is uh, th- that that's not a good parallel. I see where you're going. Yeah. Because they stopped paying them. Yeah. Right. They yeah, everybody. Paying them. Everybody could get Everybody paid. in radio yeah. now the big players, has yeah. taken a massive right, uh, pay right. hit, and a lot of people have been blown. And the thing that surprised me about it is that it doesn't parallel the movie Moneyball at all, where it seems like they're paying too much for not enough. And the Moneyball movie is they're saying you can pay less yeah. and get yeah, better. That's, because that's been disproven, that the, Moneyball theory. The teams like that, nah, sort of, yes, uh, really? kind I mean, of, sort I've of. I've heard it discredited. I mean, you know, you really, you have a, you have a, a situation campaign. where guys get paid because they can do a few little things right. well. And if they're mm-hmm. at the... But I mean, for years and but years and years... they don't excel at any one of them. No, is not what particularly. But you yeah. see, Mike, this There's not all... one guy that right. would be like a man. But the, That's how the, I got this job. But <laughs> teams that are the whales, like the Boston Red Sox, right. that have this money to spend, they don't well, they got money to spend. So yeah. they can throw a few dollars they can out of fix them. Wow, what they need to. So uh, let's go, Sox. Let's see what happens. Right. I don't have... Good luck. I'll, I'll try to get some of the, the uh, statistics, lifetime stats for any of these guys. Post uh, them on your Facebook page. That's right. Yeah. I mean, it's... Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. Mike but, likes the Boston Red I mean, Sox. Really, you, You've so, been drinking, Mike? So they <laughs> <laughs> and another thing, it's occasional power. He's okay at first base. So I read, I read about my Red Sox another... all the time, and here's the headline from the Boston Herald: Shane Victorino gives outfield flexibility. Okay, mm-hmm. when you're paying a guy tens of million dollars, you'd like a little more than flexibility. Yeah. Right. you know what I mean. <laughs> Shane Victorino, it, it was in his native Hawaii. On the island of Maui, where he's hosting a charity golf tournament. He's very excited. Talks about how excited he is. And and so this guy says, all right, this guy assigns, uh, made a, uh, what did he want? He got uh, tens of millions of dollars. A three-year, $39 million contract. He's he's good money. Here's what he says. He can make it. Quote. It's not all monetary, to tell you the truth. Oh, that's the truth. <laughs> not anymore than Hawaii. Anymore. He didn't say or that. You're there. All right. In theory, Victorino <laughs> will bring balance to a Red Sox lineup that began leaning toward the right. Talk about right-handed yeah, hitters. Right. With the addition of Napoli, who's expected to play primarily at first base, but could also see time and catcher. And left fielder Johnny Gomes. That's another guy they there you got. Go. All right. But he's always been a better hitter from the right side. So he bats uh, from the right side with a 301 average. That's pretty good. Yeah. But it's only from one side of the plate. He's a switch hitter. Hey! hey. And uh, the left side, 267. <laughs> and here's the guy that just got $39 million. Uh-huh. Victorino is coming off a career worst year. 
So the, well, the they probably got going him as a contract. He's coming off a career worse. worse they probably year. got him for a deal then. Yeah. I mean, he might have been twelve million if he had a Here's good year. Here's the stat I was telling you. This man is going to get three years and thirty-nine million dollars. Would you like to know what he batted last year? Sure. He batted two fifty-five. Yeah. And he had eleven home runs <laughs> and fifty-five RBIs. That is what gets you forty million dollars wow. in major league baseball. Let's try out. He's that not that much it. better than we are. <laughs> right. Uh, one major league scout suggested yesterday that Victorino's skills are in decline. Although another speculated that he was merely distracted by trade rumors and his impending free agency. He was also Welcome distracted. To the world of baseball, boys. He was also distracted, Mike, by huge stacks of money in his living room. <laughs> oh he was afraid God. they'd yeah. fall on him. Yeah. I just had like a, the worst thought ever uh -huh. that you may not be able to go to Florida because of uh, Carla's pregnancy. Can she fly? Uh, it doesn't matter because we're driving down. Oh, ah, okay. And we were going to do a little trip down there Last uh, in March, oh, I don't know where for the first time I would be able to see the Red Sox mm -hmm. in two years mm -hmm. uh, right. playing in spring training. But uh, well, sorry, airlines. It's absurd. I can't. It's it's not affordable. Oh, you, you can't you can't fly down there. So you know, things I used to do. Yeah, Florida things I used to do by Mike O'Meara. <laughs> so anyway, part. I just like to say to the Red Sox, lick it. Uh, good luck yeah. to you. They're gonna blow we'll see, anyway. We'll see, we'll see. Yeah, they're gonna blow anyway. I uh -huh. uh, hope you get lucky. Uh, that's it. All right. So uh, we got the vowels, Victorino and Napoli. <laughs> uh, got all my. Uh, and I was not drunk on Facebook. Good. It was and, not. Uh, that's it. I got it all covered. We're gonna take a break. Come back with Rob Spiewak and the audio vault right, right on time. after this. Now, this has a little Christmassy sound oh, to it. Oh, no, it very, is a Christmas much song. Very much so, yes. Like, like, Maka is a thing to say on a bright Hawaiian You're freaking me out, Buzz. Buzz, is this from one of your albums? I'm, you I used to one of the songs I'm working on for my Christmas song. Oh, really? Yeah. Your, your Christmas song? Yeah, Mele Kaleke Maka is, the Hawaii, is Hawaii's way. Uh, who, I say Merry Christmas to you. Yeah. Are you are you going to uh, give us like a Christmas concert? Yeah, at the Third Tacular. Yeah, you asked thought him to, thought to bring it in Friday. Very excited about that. It should be a lot of fun. Welcome back to the you show. Forgot, <laughs> you forgot you asked for that. <laughs> Rob's <laughs> Magic Audio Vault is brought to you. It's well, been what are you doing about interesting couple of weeks. Uh, Soda Stream. Yes. Oh. This is funny. Uh, I'm, I'm going to share this uh, yeah. story that Buzz brought in today regarding SodaStream. An ad for SodaStream, a home carbonation product, has been making the rounds worldwide. Uh, it's a good ad. In, yeah, yeah. in it, bottles of soda seems to combust, uh, seem to combust spontaneously every time someone uses the soda stream elsewhere in the world. The takeaway, why pay for bottled drinks when you can make your own soda at home? I agree. Yeah. You, you have an amazing sense with SodaStream. I'm starting to get a lot of feedback from mm -hmm. our listeners about mm -hmm. it of just how how good it is financially to right. get this product. Uh, so reducing the numbers, they have one blow up every time somebody makes a soda. Right. Yeah, a bottle of soda somewhere, somewhere else. blows up. Eco yeah. Not everyone was swayed by the me the message. UK broadcast company Clearcast banned the ad <gasps> before it was set to screen during mm -hmm. a break of the popular program, That's I'm why. a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here. Right. Clearcast said in a statement that the ad denigrated other soft drinks. Yeah, because in advertising, mm -hmm. you don't denigrate the other product. No, 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 not at all. Jeez. <laughs> in response, SodaStream, UK's manager, Managing director Fiona Hope. It's a cool name. I want to tell you. Rocker. She called the move absurd and said that Clearcast clearly gives priority to soft drink giants. Of course, mm -hmm. more so, money. It's really funny. They're talking about Soda Stream. But realize the power you hold in your hands by buying a Soda Stream. Right? Uh, you know, you can flavor this soda with a anything you want. They have wonderful flavors: grape, Diet Coke, mm -hmm. uh, not Diet Coke, Diet Cola. Diet Cola. Diet Cola right, and right. Uh, you know, it's fun to experiment with different flavors. I've been doing that. It turns water into fizzy soda in seconds. The handsome new Soda Stream. Source comes with a lighted carbonation indicator. Fill the bottle with water. Bam! You have your soda. It's fantastic. About 25 cents a can. Choose your style and color at Bed Bath & Beyond, Target, Walmart, Macy's & Kohl's. Or visit SodaStream.com. SodaStream is smart, simple soda. Don't ban those ads in the U.K. Yeah. No! Stop that. Let's open Come up on. the audio vault. See what we got for today. This is Wednesday, December 5, 2020. Lots of talk about the fiscal cliff, and I think a lot of people don't understand it, Mike. And that might be the problem. So now, the, the the latest being that uh, Obama might be letting it happen to make the Republicans look bad. I'm not sure I like that. We'll see. Yeah, what well, they, what I heard there are a number of tax. That's one of them. Mm -hmm. yeah. One of them they're going to uh, yield so they have more leverage later. All this stuff. But the, if we understand it, that's the first step to solving it. That's so right. here is a noted guy that will help explain the fiscal cliff. Thank thing. goodness. Here's Mr. Burns from The Simpsons <laughs> <laughs> describing the fiscal cliff. And if you'd that's like good. to see the video for this, this is on our YouTube page. All right. Morning, hey. sir. No. Any word from Colonel Rove? <laughs> Sir, despite what he's been telling you, it's over. Romney lost. Damn it. I guess it's time I explain 
to these good people the upcoming fiscal cliff. <laughs> The economy is a car, and the rich man is the driver. If you don't give the driver all the money, he'll drive you over a cliff. It's just common sense. Furthermore, rich people feel things more deeply than the common man. <laughs> and we've got to change our approach to immigration. I have a progressive proposal to let into this country 200 grimy Irishmen a year. I've got lots of potatoes that need peeling. And stables to be mucked out. Sir, the instapoles are in. You're just taking yourself deep. <laughs> well, then let me just say this. Marco Rubio es un panuelo rosa. I'm afraid you just made things even worse. How? Why? You just said Marco Rubio is a pink handkerchief. This public service announcement is over. <laughs> God. Well done. They well still done. do it, don't they? they? Do, and when they, they want to write, they know how to write. Yeah, well, when yeah. they're passionate about yeah. something, which they obviously are. Still don't like Jimmy Fallon. Don't really care for the Jimmy Fallon show, but the fact you remains... You and I are on the same page on that, my friend. I do not like Mr. Fallon one little bit. I think he... I think Jimmy Fallon amuses Jimmy Fallon, and yeah, that's Yeah, and I think it. he uses the show as the biggest train set in the world to Absolutely, play with. Absolutely, and I don't dig that. But he does have a great band, The Roots. And yep, last they night they did the roots something. are fantastic. He gave the roots all instruments you would see in a classroom. Little xylophone, little <laughs> mouth organ and oh, stuff. That's funny. Yeah. And I'll they give did, him credit and for And they that. did this. They said live from the music room, they had Mariah Carey come in, who oh. looked fantastic. Yeah. Okay. And she sang what I think is the best Christmas song of the past 50 years. Right. Backed up by the roots, playing childhood instruments. I want you to hear this one. Wow. I love when they do stuff like this. Yeah. Little kids singing back up. Mariah's a good voice. She sounds fantastic because this is not her even holding a mic. She's sitting in a room just singing. Wow. And they did this live. And they are the Roots doing her backup vocals yeah. too? No, kids are. Kids, kids are. Yeah, the Roots Children. are just playing baby xylophones. That's awesome. <laughs> All right, here's the hug. Cool. That's, That's awesome. That's so a lot fun. of fun. I like Very that. Nice. And I like Mariah Carey it, it, a lot. You know, it's funny with a you know there's a, a viral video uh, that comes from Letterman with Darlene Love mm -hmm. uh, that, that's been all over the place. Love and that. it seems like they, she sings Christmas Baby Please Come Home yeah. every year, and they every year they do it a little different. And they know. step up their yeah. game with the live awesome. music for these wonderful bands that are part, part of these TV shows. Yeah, the love best. Um, there have been 32 different motion picture versions of A Christmas Carol. Yuck. 32 too many, versions. Too many. Some of them are some really suck. Yeah, too. and some of them are amazing. Some I think are great. We always disagree. I like the George C. Scott one. That's my I, favorite. I like George C. Scott, and then there's an old black and white one. I think the Alistair one. Sim one, I think, is the one you like. Yeah, I think that's and the one And believe it or not, Mr. Magoo's Christmas Carol is one of the oh, best. Also 100%. Very good. We are also in total agreement. Good, yeah. Those are the big Tim three. Tim Burton's A Nightmare Before Christmas. <laughs> okay, uh, not the same. Different yeah. movie, but also great. <laughs> not the same. But to save time, Mike, here is all 32 different Scrooges saying bah humbug. Uh, Merry Christmas, Uncle. Humbug. 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 Christmas a humbug, Uncle. You don't mean that, I'm sure. Bah humbug. Bah humbug. 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 Bah humbug. Merry Christmas. Humbug. Humbug. Oh, I hate Christmas. Humbug. Humbug. Bah humbug. Bah humbug. Humbug stew. Bah, humbug. Humbug. Bah, humbug. Humbug, Mr. Bullock. Oh, thank you. <laughs> bah, humbug. Humbug. Bah, humbug to you, too. Humbug. Humbug. And God bless us all, everyone. Humbug. <laughs> so that's it. I heard uh, Yosemite Sam in there. Yeah, there was a uh, there was a, uh, a Looney Tunes one in there. Yeah. Rob, you know I like you. I'm a number one queen, and you know that we love the theater. And yes. I've said for years, as you know, mm -hmm. that my dream role well, would I know be it. to play Tevya. Yeah, and Fiddler on the Roof. The uh, th what I don't talk about mm -hmm. a lot. The, the next one right in back of it would be to uh, play Scrooge. And you know what? Like I, love I would love to do that. And they have all these little like community uh, theater. Oh, and you're better than that. <laughs> That's that. So Don't often they that. cast. Hey hipster, I do it. I do it in a heartbeat. It's a great role. So He'd be often, great at it. He would, it's and you know what? Brow. So often You're they the they cast a skinny Scrooge, and <laughs> I like to see I like to see a heftier Scrooge. Well, because it means he's greedy and I'm, he keeps stuff for himself. Uh, I'm, I'm your write, I'm your Huckleberry. I'm yeah. gonna write down a name here. Charles yeah. Yeah. Charles is Dickens that, is, is it Johnny Holiday? No, this is someone that is doing local theater. Oh, really? This will change his view. Can this be on camera or no? It's fine. He he really wouldn't be showing it to me if he didn't know it was going to work. Yeah. 
Okay. <laughs> Who? That. Okay. Can I see? It? Okay. Ah, yeah, gotcha. you right. better than that. But you have to admit, right. she got a, she got a great Scrooge. role, though. No, it was Ghost of Grism- Christmas Dinner's Pat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, enough. Okay. Let's move on. Um, how did you That's feel yeah. bad, when a bad impressionist gets national coverage? Did you hear about the Australian disc jockeys? No, uh, yeah, doing the Queen? Yeah. They got, there's nothing funny about it. It's nothing, and they're horrible voices. <laughs> okay, I mean, you know what? You don't get there's to play it. There's 10 seconds you, you, of it. You, you don't get to play it. Now, let me tell okay, you why. Okay, okay. I don't want to hit the, uh, the explosion. Yeah. They don't deserve it. Right. They call the hospital where uh, Pippa is uh, right, right. having a uh, you know no, like morning Kate, sickness. Kate, 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 Kate Middleton, yeah, that's right. Oh, where Kate. Kate Middleton is uh, having morning sickness, and they call and they do a crappy impression wow. of the Queen. And they got through to the private nurse. And you know, and we are so bankrupt for talent in, on American mm-hmm. radio that what you get is the Australian disc jockeys to call and go, "Hello, this is the Queen. I'd like to find out how it's my grand a weak DJ prank. It's yeah, yeah. really yeah. horrible. Uh, yeah, you go ahead. Uh, I, I, I'm so glad you mentioned that. I almost forgot. <laughs> uh, public service announcement. Okay. Oh, good. Uh, to all the uh, wonderful ladies listening to the show, uh, with all due respect, I bring this to you from your friend Oscar Santana. Here we go. <laughs> oh, you need some music for this? <clears throat> Please. All right, Something well, uplifting. Well, <laughs> uh, this holiday season, uh, as the news breaks of uh, the pending uh, royal pregnancy, uh-huh. yes. that does not mean that you should also get pregnant. That does not mean that you should run out and talk to your husband and say, maybe we should have another child. Uh, this is just a royal family having a child. Follow right. along. Just because it. she's pregnant doesn't mean you have to get pregnant. That's right. Okay. Because she buys ugly colored jeans, you could do that all day. <laughs> but bringing a life into this world is a big responsibility. Seriously. So you're saying that, uh, the, that there is a groundswell of uh, support for women getting pregnant that, that, because of the royals. That's all they want to do. Everybody yes. wants to do it. I'm now, very happy way. to say well, that you, had that you did be- it first. That I, that I made my announcement Pre-pregnancy. Yes. long before, not long before, but really right before right. Uh, right. Yeah. Right. Uh, Prince William. And also you were suffering nausea before Kate Middleton. Yes, I was. Which yes. is, and speaking of PSAs. I'm suffering it right now, as a matter speaking of Speaking of PSAs, Oscar for the past two years has brought what he likes to call a rando to our open yes, house. Yes. Is that going to happen this year? Because no, I'm we've, like, had, we've had great joy. Do you remember the guy with the huge zit on his nose two yeah, years ago? That he is, did bring us great joy. That's a holiday tradition that I would be more than happy to say yep, bye-bye My to. dance card is full. Okay. <laughs> Are Just you bringing checking. your lady? I'm bringing uh, my lady and I think Todd, because I can't drink, is I'm, to, oh, I'm DDing them. Yeah, before, I know we're in the middle of the audio, well, but fine. can I ask you this because I'm, I'm feeling guilty? Yeah. Uh, it, you were being polite, right? Todd wasn't uh, that 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 it wasn't that big uh, he, a deal that I didn't it, show up at his party, right? It was a big deal. To He'll him. speak to it on Friday. Yeah, well, he won't we, we can it. address. He won't admit to it. It was awkward because there he were other will people after at the, he drinks. <laughs> people He'll keep admitting to it. You, uh, you, you, I guess you responded. You uh, a positive RSVP on the Evite? Yes. Okay. So when I got there, no more than five people, and you weren't going to dance for anyone. These are people you've met in the right, past. Right. Yeah. I said, hey, I heard Mike was coming. I, yeah, I'm and, sorry. And, and I gave I did a, a great cover up. I didn't want to make you look like an alcoholic. I said he got right. hammered last night. You couldn't do two nights in a row. But like when you get the test for being an alcoholic, that's one of the questions. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Have you ever missed a uh, you know a have function ever, oh, because of alcohol? Really? Oh, absolutely. Actually, the actual yeah. phrasing. Have you ever disappointed Todd Moore? <laughs> <laughs> no, he was fine. He didn't make a big deal. Hi, and speaking of that, ex- thanks, Quench. That same instance. Tape continues to surface from that night at Quench, Mike. Really? Okay. And this is not me singing. This is not you singing. This is our young, dazzling Hebrew, Mark Ronick, beatboxing. Okay. Oh, and do you, re- do you recall he was beatboxing for a long, long time? Mike was in the bathroom. Yeah, but, but he was for not long, in the bathroom long that long because you beatboxed a <laughs> be, long time. Can I be time. honest with you? I, I know he beatboxes. I've right. heard him do it yes. before. I think I was in the bathroom for a while. Yes. Uh, and I believe that uh, the only reason I knew he was beatboxing is because there were references to it on Facebook the next day. All right. 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 So, well, maybe that this was will bring easy up, part of the year. Maybe it'll come back to you when you hear this <laughs> dazzling audio tape. It's Mark Ronick, everybody. Pretty good. I believe was this I'm, a quench? Yeah. 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 He eventually names the rap. I think this is where it came in. Does he do a rap? No, he just names it. Listen. It's called M.U. Rob. Rob. (laughs) We were out of control. (laughs) This is in Lily White Rockville? Pretty fly for a white guy. Ooh, a little weird. Yeah, he's doing like a duck thing, yeah. <laughs> Look for it on iTunes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our waitress Cassandra, she really liked it. Yeah. Bravo, Cassandra was wonderful. Now she back was. from Portugal, Mike. 
And I know you vacationed in sunny Portugal many times. <laughs> I just, uh, Anderson no, Cooper. Ahead, no, no, you go ahead. No, no, no I'm not going ahead. <laughs> no. go ahead. Anderson, for after the show. Boys. That's right. Thank you. Very good. Anderson <laughs> Cooper is back from Portugal. And uh, he had a problem, Mike. Uh, yes. <laughs> he got sunburned eyes. I go to Portugal, which is a beautiful country I'd never been before, stunning place. I'm in this beautiful coastal area shooting a story for 60 minutes, but I'm on the water for two hours. I wake up in the middle of the night, and it feels like my eyes are on fire, my oh, eyeballs. And I fair. think, oh, well, maybe I have sand in my eyes or something. I douse my, my eyes with water. Talk anyway, it turns out I have sunburned my eyeballs, oh. and I went blind for about 36 hours. See? You be careful you out can, there on the water. You can sunburn your eyeballs? I've done it, and it does feel like sand in your eyes. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't go blind, but it was damned uncomfortable for a day. Wow. Yeah. Wear yeah. your sunglasses, people. Absolutely. That's right. Do you think this is a cover-up? Because you know what he's into. <laughs> Are you saying he's had How stuff in his eye before? Yeah. Well, maybe he, Oscar's making reference to the why he went blind for 36 hours. <laughs> That's good. I stopped after I needed I glasses. Uh, yeah, and so we closed my... Yes. Conan O'Brien, do you know that with Kate Middleton going through the royal queasiness, yes. she's getting advice from all corners. The royal queasiness. She's suffering from the royal queasiness. Yes. Uh, Kate Middleton having a baby. Isn't that exciting? Yeah. Woo, not our country. Woo. <laughs> Can stop, 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 stop. <laughs> New All right. He's right. I know what place that comes from. Because Conan, a uh, big New England Irish Catholic family. Hates it. I will tell you that. We are we we are raised at our dinner tables. You do not get into the royal family. Right. They're still the enemy as yeah. far as the Irish are concerned. Exactly. That's, that's what makes me. I'm Snooky. New mom Snooky. <laughs> Snooky says she wants to give baby advice to Kate Middleton. Yeah. <laughs> Snooky said her number one tip is find out who the father is. <laughs> <laughs> and that, Mike, that is your magic audio voice. We will take a break and come back with Buzzed News right after this on the Michael Mara Show, everybody. Yeah. I'm just... I, the, the new music that you bring to the table as far as Christmas. Yeah, but this of, is old. This is the Kinks from like 25 years ago. I know, but I mean, it's just, it just, there's so much. I didn't realize. Yeah. You know, when you started uh, sharing uh, your music with me about this, and uh, how many total Christmas songs do you have in your in oh, your repertoire? God, um, I would say 2,000. Oh my God, I didn't wow. even know there were that many made. Yeah, if oh, there you, are. If you listen to the crappy like radio stations that right. play the Christmas they music, what do you hear about 13 of them? Yeah. Well, you know what they do? They see what tests well and they do they run about an 85 minute rotation and that's why but there's so much more than that i mean and it really i will tell you this as someone who is new to this experiment of hearing brand new christmas music mm -hmm. everybody needs a rob spiewak because yeah. you need to hear the fresh stuff it just is more fun i yeah. try to and pick it gets up you about, more in the christmas spirit i try to pick up about four cds I'm a gonna year i'm going to take you up on that yeah off. let it's me know Buzz. That's good. Uh, welcome back I'll to the pass. show without further ado let's Wasn't get right offered. to it <laughs> thank you Oscar's being a pain in i actually i've got a couple songs for you i have a done Sunday esta Santa Claus, and of course, the hat I got for Christmas is too big. But I will give Oscar credit. He did talk my God of doing live theater. <laughs> I'll never do it now. Right. Based on that. You might. Not, not, you might. Not, never say not never. a chance. Uh, here's Buzz. Take it away, Buzz. <laughs> I saw a sign in Manassas yesterday. I don't know. What, what does the word sultaneous mean? Oh, jeez. Yes. That's, uh, that's crackers. Well, no, that's, no. that's what I thought. Yeah. Sardinas actually is what my mom makes. Um, uh -huh. They're like empanadas, they're so like meat ah. pockets. Uh, See, been, I was close. It must have been a restaurant. Sardinas with cheese. Uh, did you see it up at the shopping center up here? Uh, no, it's just a handmade sign uh, down 28. Oh, I'll pick some up. You know, yeah. since you mentioned, nice. you know what I want to try around here? What? You look at Anthony Bourdain and these guys that go into these local areas. You know, this is a we have a tremendous mm. Hispanic community here in Man Manassas. Yeah. Hold it. I want to find. A, uh, <laughs> I want to find a really good. Taqueria, one mm -hmm. of those places where they make the really, like, f from Mexico, the tacos, or, yeah. or El Salvador. Mm -hmm. I really want to find, so if anybody knows, in our, you know, local Look, community, I'll be one close, share, share, share me a, a local one. There's a Taco Bell. Shut up, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Go ahead, buzz. The news today brought to you by Strine Creative. You've seen what Gabe Strine does for us. Now you can put him and his team to work on all of your graphic designs. Strine Creative's not just round-headed DJs. It's branding <laughs> and marketing for print, the web, and yes, even animation. Let Strine Creative help your ideas come alive, strinecreative.com or click their eye-catching ad on our website. We're going to need some music on the new frontier, but Dave Brubeck won't be the guy. He has passed oh, the jazz musician oh, at the boy. age of 91. That's a biggie. That is a biggie yeah, for really me. Is. Oscar, for how does that make you feel? 
Uh, is uh, did he? You know what? He played with Buddy Guy, correct? Yeah, yeah very good. Very That's good. good. Dave yeah. Brubeck, wow. one of the true greats. Take five. Yeah. Nice. Uh, one of my yeah. favorite. And also, you know jazz. what? Everyone will play that, but not many will play this. This is Blue Rondo a la Turk from the same album. Just as good. Listen to it. man. Uh, take a moment. That it just happened, huh? Yes. Dave Brubeck. Wow. Legend. That's a shame. That makes me very, very sad. That's, and do you know uh, why? Uh, uh, take sad. five, one of the most recognizable jazz standards of all. Do you know why it's called take five? Why is it called take five? The meter is in five four. Okay, one. And maybe the first mainline uh, release to ever yeah. do an off meter like that. He's everybody, very, very ahead of his time. Everybody knows this. I like this. Man, it's great. Great jazz. Great jazz jam. Mm -hmm. Dave Brubeck, genius. Absolutely. Cool stuff, man. Really right. great. Safe home, uh, yeah, Dave Brubeck. That's sad. Very good. Well, you know, Christmas is coming, and you've been very, very bad this year. I'm sorry, but You're going to need a spanking, especially after <laughs> reading Fifty Shades of Grey. Every year, an adult toy store in Britain releases a list of the top sex toys of the holiday season. Last year, there were no bondage or discipline toys on the list. This year, all five of the top toys are exactly that. Black because of the book, right? Yeah. yeah, that's really it. Black bondage ropes are number one, followed by the satin blindfold, uh, the leather paddles, some balls on a string, oh. and furry handcuffs. Coming in at number six, Anderson Cooper's eye powder. Oh. <laughs> it's not powder. You know, even, uh, <laughs> even the show Boardwalk Empire right. had some uh, S&M worked into that with the uh, the lead character, the bad guy, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the guy likes uh, autoerotic asphyxiation. Oh, that's Actually, extreme. not autoerotic, because it's not his own. I mean, he would have somebody choke him out. While he was uh, doing yeah. his little thing. That's how we lost Dave Brubeck. <laughs> hey, say, too, what? I'm sorry. Too I, soon. I meant Michael Hutchins. I, I didn't misspoke. make the other joke I wanted to make. You will which later. Which I'm going to tell you after the show. Thank you. I'm going to hit play Thank and record. In, in California. Uh, in California, it will now be illegal for psychotherapists to try to turn kids under 18 from gay to straight. Conversion therapy is controversial because of its bizarre practices and because many believe it can actually harm a person's mental health. Three conversion therapists got a federal judge to block the law on Monday on free speech grounds, but yesterday a district judge upheld the new law that now bans conversion therapy See, in Mike, California. you can't do that to me. That's right. There's a lot of people that say that um, these therapists, some of them in their own right, uh, have gone through this themselves. They were gay at one point and mm -hmm. proclaimed that they've changed themselves. Yeah, so they're messed up to start with. Yeah. It's very scary Allegedly. stuff. And, and it's bigoted. The, the therapy is just weird. It's also, it's you know, it's discriminatory. In, in Raleigh, North Carolina, a prison superintendent has been suspended for making inmates not only drink hot sauce, but also to rub it on their genitals. Just now, like Blair Warner. Hey, you know, now, now, I don't think this call, counts as S&M, but I mean, I understand making somebody drink it. That's a mm -hmm, violation. Right. Uh, rubbing it on the genitals, I mean, hey, that's just fun. For one that's thing, right. it, it helps me last so much longer. <laughs> but it should be. God. Can we edit that out? Oh, oh, God. God. Speaking of that, uh, I want to apologize to my girlfriend for this morning. <laughs> oh. <laughs> really? Happy holidays. It was embarrassing. Mm -hmm. Sorry. I mean, you know, okay. On the in bright side, she was not late. Let him finish his news story. In a letter to their district. District court, six inmates there in North Carolina say they were forced to do these things for the opportunity to work for 70 cents a day. Uh, and also prison road crew workers say that they were forced to kiss deadly snakes and to simulate sex acts. Uh, adrenaline rushes through a cop's body in the heat of the moment. That adrenaline proved unstoppable in Cleveland last week during a high-speed chase. At one point, orders came over the police radio twice to end the chase, but the cops kept going. The chase ended on a dead-end road where the driver and his female passenger were killed as 13 officers fired 137 bullets into them. Wow. The suspects were unarmed, and there is no evidence they were ever armed at any point in the chase. The suspects were black, the officers were white, except for one Hispanic, and four of these 13 officers have a history of violent confrontation. There will, of course, be an investigation. Jeez. Whoa. Let's see what happens with that. Uh, cop shops across America are asking Congress for new powers to read your text messages. This law would require all providers, cell providers, to keep this information, all of your text, for at least two years. I can just see they knock on the door. <laughs> Mr. O'Mara, were you communicating with uh, Mr. Ronick on Monday night? Uh, Mr. Uh, Ronick uh, has filed for unemployment six times. <laughs> <laughs> now, currently, a sprint keeps text. You know it's a good text thread uh, when you start it out with, 
blow me. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> That's how the evening started. Always nice. Yeah. Can you hear the music? And, and Without ends, even saying you with, hear the music. Ends yeah. with, remember who you work for. <laughs> <laughs> you went too far. I know. <laughs> Currently, Sprint uh, keeps text for 12 days, Nextel for 7, AT&T and T-Mobile. Don't keep them at all. How about that? Uh, Verizon, however, is trying to patent a new DVR that comes with a camera and a microphone built in so they can watch and listen to you. Oh, Software. Oh, wait. Software in the DVR then targets you with advertising based on what you're doing or saying in your living room. Hey, the cops are at Mike's door again. It's like Minority Report. Cuddle. <laughs> yeah, it's getting scary. Nice. Cuddle, and you will see an ad for contraceptives. Argue, and you'll see an ad for marriage counseling. Uh, this is you what know, could the, possibly go these wrong. Grill, are, these maybe are the, you'll see a man created. Exactly. These are the techno what nerds gone while you're watching This television. is using their power mm -hmm. for evil. That's right. That's right. Very bad. If you wonder why John Boehner clings so tightly to tax breaks for the rich, you have to remember that as Speaker of the House, he has to speak for other lawmakers, no matter how crazy they are. Yesterday, Boehner got some sharp criticism, not from liberals, uh, not from Democrats, but from conservatives who say Boehner is getting too soft on the idea of bringing the government new revenue. In the Mad Hatter world of the Tea Party, government is bad and funding government is even worse. Boehner is doing what he can to combat these folks. Yesterday, he kicked some of them off high-powered committees. Boehner's message uh, to quote a Republican aide is, you want a good career? Play nicely. Mm -hmm. former, hey, that's good for Boehner. Got to give yeah. him credit. For, Absolutely. Former House Majority Leader Dick Army left the Dick Army yesterday, resigning as chairman of the Tea Party group known as Freedom Works. He says the direction the group is taking is unproductive. It's uh, starting to crumble. The wheels guys. are coming yeah, off. Yeah. Starting to crumble like bit. it was. Now a lot of people predicted. I don't think it's going to crumble in time to solve any of this fiscal cliff stuff. But I think you're going to have maybe you know any time mm. on either side you can weed out some of the mm. really whack job, job extremists. Yeah, right. Why not? Uh, the latest fiscal cliff notes include a proposal by Democratic lawmakers to immediately let everyone keep their Bush-era tax cuts except for the top 2% of earners. That turns up the heat on Republicans, putting them in a position of having to vote against middle-class tax cuts. Will they do it? We'll see what happens. And finally, the yearbook editors at Mother Teresa Secondary School in London, Ontario, didn't notice that a student in the group photo had taken his testicles out of his pants. Uh, <laughs> who's that guy from your dorm room? Kevin. That's right. <laughs> Good old Kevin. It is funny. They noticed it now that all the yearbooks have been printed and distributed. <laughs> I'm sorry. I think wow. that's fantastic. The school has now issued a self-adhesive photoshopped version of the picture <laughs> so students can cover up the naughty picture with a more innocent version. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm you, not gonna, you know, I wouldn't be one of those students. You know, if they want to. I would, put that, the, I would put that in a position of honor in my <laughs> home. I'm Buzz yeah. Burbank. I'm the Mike O'Mara Show. Thank you, Buzz. Our show today was brought to you by The Man Grade. Men's Health calls it one of 2012's best grilling accessories. We call it one of the year's best holiday gifts. The Man Grade, 100% made in America, cast iron. Oscar drives the iron to the smelting plant yes. every day. Or mine myself. Mines it, too. He can smelt it. You get those great steakhouse grill marks. It's just nineteen ninety nine. Order it, please. Support our friend Mr. Santana. Yeah. And you. buy a man great for nineteen ninety nine at MikeOmeraShow dot com. But wait, there's more. You get that great Mike O'Mara Show TMOS grilling brush. Give the grilling great that's changing the way America grills. Give the man great. We'll be back tomorrow with a brand new one. And don't forget Friday. Oh, it's the open house tech what is it? Third tacular. Third tacular. Have a good one. Bye bye everybody. Bye. Ciao, ciao.